Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Diksha Rathod. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 23rd of November. Transnational cross-border terrorism gravest threat says India's defense minister at ASEAN meet. Taliban wants women invisible. We want them to thrive, says EU Parliament President. And Nepal's PM Deoba elected from Dadal Dhura for record seventh time. And now for all the details. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Wednesday described transnational and cross-border terrorism as the gravest threat that the world is facing as he addressed the ASEAN Defence Minister's meeting in Cambodia. Singh called for urgent and resolute intervention by the international community, saying that indifference can no longer be a response as terrorism has found victims globally. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Wednesday addressing the Association of Southeast Asian Nations ASEAN Defence Ministers Meeting ADMM Plus in Cambodia described transnational and cross-border terrorism as the gravest threat that the world is facing and called for urgent and resolute intervention by the international community. Singh said indifference can no longer be a response as terrorism has found victims globally. He also highlighted how terrorist groups have created interlinkages across continents backed by new age technologies to transfer money and recruit supporters. Amid China's growing assertiveness on maritime issues, the Defence Minister reaffirmed India's call for a free, open and inclusive order in the Indo-Pacific region. He said he hoped that the ongoing negotiations on the Code of Conduct on the South China Sea will be fully consistent with the international law. Earlier on Tuesday, Rajnath Singh co-chaired the ASEAN-India Defence Minister's meeting and also held talks with top Cambodian leadership and met US Defence Secretary Austin Lloyd as well. With participation from 10 countries of the ASEAN and 8 major plus countries, Singh said, ADMM Plus can position itself not just as a forum for regional security, but a driver for world peace. A top army official on Tuesday reacting to a recent statement by India's defence minister hinting at retrieving parts of Kashmir illegally occupied by Pakistan said that the Indian army is ready to carry out any order given by the government. India has long called upon Pakistan to vacate areas of Kashmir under its illegal occupation. A senior Indian Army official, Lieutenant General Upendra Dvivedi, addressing reporters on the Poonch link-up day, said on Tuesday that the Indian Army is ready to carry out any order given by Government of India over the part of Kashmir illegally occupied by Pakistan, also known as Pakistan Occupied Kashmir or POK. The statement from Lieutenant General Dvivedi, who heads the Army's Northern Command, came after Defence Minister Rajnath Singh hinted getting back POK in his address on Infantry Day. He added there was nothing new in Rajnath's statement, as parliamentary resolution exists on the POK issue. Raksha Mantri gave the statement about the POJK. As you are aware that Parliamentary, resolu parliamentary resolution already exists on the subject, so therefore it's nothing new. It is part of the parliamentary resolution. As far as Indian Army is concerned, Indian Army will carry out any order which has been given by the government of India. And whenever such orders are given, we'll always be ready for it. Talking about the security situation in India's Jammu and Kashmir, General Dvivedi added that since the abrogation of the region's special status, situation has improved significantly. He further added, 300 terrorists are currently active in Jammu and Kashmir, with 160 terrorists sitting at the launch pads to cross border. India has long accused neighbouring Pakistan of backing terrorists to spread unrest in its Jammu and Kashmir region. Islamabad denies the accusation and claims it only provides diplomatic and moral support to Kashmiris. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's former Prime Minister and opposition PTI chief Imran Khan has reiterated that the solution to economic problems in his country is the establishment of the rule of law. 
In a virtual address, Khan, who was ousted in April this year, once again demanded snap election, calling it a need of our to rescue Pakistan from economic and political turmoil. Pakistan's former Prime Minister and opposition PTI chairman Imran Khan on Tuesday once again said the solution for stability in economy depends on the rule of law. In the interest of time, Recalling the economic situation minutes, during uh, his tenure, former PM said Mr. economy Arthur, was still in bad shape, but they managed to pay their liabilities with help from China, Saudi and the UAE. Khan, who was to addressing a seminar via video conference, added that investors fear to invest in Pakistan due to instability. We have to control the law. We have to control the law. And this is the number one thing. And this is not easy because the power is not easy to control the law. But if we have to start this, then as soon as people have confidence in the Pakistan justice system, तो यहां इन्वेस्टमेंट की कोई कमी नहीं है क्योंकि 22 करोड़ लोग एक बहुत बड़ी मार्केट होती है खान टेकिंग अ डिग एट शहबाज लेट गवर्नमेंट असर्टेड फ्रेश इलेक्शन इज द नीड ऑफ द आर टू रेस्क्यू द कंट्री फ्रॉम ऑन गोइंग इकोनॉमिक टर्मोइल एंड रिस्टोर स्टेबिलिटी एंड कॉन्फिडेंस ही आल्सो क्लेम द गवर्नमेंट हैज क्रिएटेड सच अ सिचुएशन वेयर पीटीआई डज नॉट नीड टू कैंपेन फॉर विनिंग द इलेक्शंस adding that opinion polls show majority for PTI for any by-election or snap election. Meanwhile, reacting to Khan's address, Pakistan's information minister and PMLN leader, Maryam Aurangzeb said that in Imran's four-year tenure, there was rise of unemployment. She accused the PTI chief of aiming instability in the country as soon as Pakistan started to stabilize under Shehbaz Sharif's government. Moving on. A massive protest was held by locals and political activists in Balochistan's Gwadar area recently over the Pakistan government's failure to fulfill its promises, including ban on illegal fishing by Chinese trawlers and other civic issues. The protesters raised concern that the first right on natural resources in Balochistan should be of the indigenous people, but they are being deprived of it. Hundreds of protesters took to the streets in Balochistan's Gwadar area recently over the Pakistan government's failure to fulfill its promises, including ban on illegal fishing by Chinese trawlers, recovery of missing people and other civic issues related to the port city. The demonstrators led by Mulana Hidayatur Rehman Baloch, a local leader of Jamate Islami Party, blocked the main highway on Sunday leading to Gwadar port following 25 days of protest. Rehman said the port city will continue to witness such protests until their demands are met, which were agreed upon after similar protests in 2021. If attention is not given, the public will have no choice but to close the port, he said. The protesters raised concern that the first right on natural resources in Balochistan should be of the indigenous people, but they are being deprived of it by the Pakistan government which has deceived them in the name of China-Pakistan Economic Corridor or CPEC in the region. Activists have long blamed the multi-billion dollar project has only brought death and destruction for the indigenous people instead of economic opportunities as Pakistani forces operate with impunity in the region to ensure safe passage to Beijing. In response to the continued stiffening of Taliban restrictions against women, the President of the European Parliament, Roberta Metsola, stated that Taliban has targeted women and have not even allowed them the right to live a normal life. Metsola lamented that the Taliban want Afghan women to be invisible, but they want them to thrive. President of the European Parliament, Roberta Metsola, at an event organized by the European Union in Brussels, said that the Taliban has targeted women and have not even allowed them to right to live a normal life. Speaking during the event, Matsola said that despite all the promises, women's rights were not being safeguarded in the war-torn country, thereby denting its progress. She added that the EU will try and make the voices of women from Afghanistan heard as it is committed to the betterment of the people and not the Taliban. She lamented that the Taliban want their women to be invisible, but they want them to thrive. 
15 months after the fall of Kabul, women are increasingly being squeezed out of public life and refused entry to public spaces. Despite initial promises to protect women's rights, years of progress are being rolled back. The European Parliament is committed to the people of Afghanistan, not to its rulers. The Taliban want women to be invisible. We want them to thrive. Since the return of the Taliban to Afghanistan in August 2021, the alleged systematic attacks on the rights of women and girls and the use of violence, including torture and enforced disappearances, have created a culture of fear in Afghan society. Women in Afghanistan have been deprived of education as secondary schools for girls have remained closed since last year. The Taliban are also alleged to have dismantled the system to respond to gender-based violence, created new barriers to women accessing health care, blocked women's aid workers from doing their jobs and attacked women's rights protesters. In news from Nepal, Nepal's Prime Minister and President of Nepali Congress, Sher Bahadur Deoba, has been elected for the seventh time from his home constituency, Dadal Dhura. The ruling coalition is seen inching closer towards majority according to initial results. The final poll outcome is expected in about 10 days. Nepal's incumbent Prime Minister and President of Nepali Congress, Sher Bahadur Deoba, has been elected for the record seventh time from Dadil Dhura, his home constituency. He received 25,534 votes, defeating his closest rival, Sagar Dhakal, by a margin of 12,432 votes. The ruling coalition is seen inching closer towards majority in 275 members' parliament. Out of the 165 seats which went on poll, candidates of the incumbent government's alliance in 75 constituencies has been either declared winner or were currently in lead. This is in line with the prediction of coalition retaining the government made by political analysts. Meanwhile, main opposition CPN UML chief and former Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli was also reported to be leading in Japa 5 constituency. The country, which has 18 million eligible voters, witnessed a low turnout of 61% in Sunday's election, down from the 68% seen at the last election in 2017. Nepal has had 10 governments since the abolition of a 239-year-old monarchy in 2008. A new government will face the challenge of reviving the economy and curbing high prices at a time of fears that a global recession might reduce remittances, which account for about a quarter of gross domestic product. In a rare display of their unique diplomacy style, four U.S. diplomats took to the streets of capital New Delhi in their personalized auto rickshaws, ditching their famous bulletproof secure motorcades. The diplomats underscored their love for their distinct mode of transportation as they stressed that they absolutely adored going around the streets on the three-wheeler. Four U.S. diplomats have taken to the streets of India's capital New Delhi in their personalized auto rickshaws, ditching their famous bulletproof secure motorcades as they seize the roads every morning driving in their black and pink auto rickshaws to work and official trips. The diplomats underscored their love for their distinct mode of transportation as they stressed that they absolutely adored going around the streets on the three-wheeler. One of the diplomats noted that it is her instinct to experiment in life as taught by her mother who inspired her to assume a different path, bringing others also on board. I've had a lifelong love of vehicles and so everywhere I've been there's been something special about a vehicle but really none more special in my opinion than an auto rickshaw. When I was in Pakistan uh, before coming to India I was in armored vehicles and they were big beautiful vehicles but I would always look out on the street and I would see the auto rickshaws going by and I always wanted to be in the auto rickshaw so when I got to India and they had the opportunity to buy one I took it immediately. The diplomat stated that people come forward to talk to them and introduce themselves and they said they are happy to build that one-on-one -on -one relationship, which they think is a very important part of diplomacy. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. 
Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.